Kenny McLean, welcome to the TNC podcast. We're here at the beautiful um, Yard Coffee. You've got your flat white, we've got some cookies lovely. laid out. I'm sure you'll be leaving those well alone. No, no touching them. The coffee's lovely though. It is nice. I'll isn't be it? back. <laughs> How's things? All good. All yeah. good, thank you. Um, yeah, off the back of a good result at the weekend, so what's not be happy about? Cheeky assist as well. She, uh, we flick on it from the Just close. about, just about. Yeah, I got a skiff on that, hit the nose. Um, no, we, worked, we actually worked on that all week as well, so it was actually good nice. to see stuff like that coming off. Alan Russell, I didn't mention him, Scottish and that, but he uh, banged on about it all week. Yeah. Second contact, back post, there you go, minute in, take it. Absolutely, we must congratulate you on the new contract as well. Yeah. Um, how does it feel to be, to be locked in with Norwich until locked 2025? Locked in? It's not a punishment. <laughs> I think locked in is locked in, a, in. In, a, in a positive sense. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. Um, Obviously, delighted, <laughs> what I was going to say, I'm locked yeah. in, but um, I was up in the summer and as a lot of lads are, so you, you start to think a wee bit what, what's going to happen. Um, I'm 30 now, don't want to mention that too much, <laughs> but I'm 30 now, so it, you get to a stage in your career and you, you don't really know what's coming next for you, your family and stuff like that, so it's tough, but um, yeah, another two years after this, three potentially, um, so very happy here have been since I came and yeah get that done it was pretty pretty simple pretty easy so everybody wants the same thing it, 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 seems, it, it seems a common theme with people we've spoken to Chris both current players and past players I mean you're, you're obviously born and bred in Scotland it's a it's a long way from there but people seem to come to Norwich and just settle you've obviously found that as well in the in the fine city you see well, a lot of people stay here after they play. Yeah. Obviously, Simon Lappin is Scottish as well, still about the club and he's doing Spanish. Bits. Come on, King is Spanish. <laughs> sorry, but he's. Um, I think he actually, when I spoke to him when we were in Tampa, there he moved back home for like two years. I think he went to Cardiff, and he, his wife was desperate to get back really? here. Really? Yeah. Costa del Norte. I think it was yeah. his. His wife was always saying they'll come back here, so he's back here, and who knows. Um, my daughter's English, born in Norfolk, um, so Good. maybe she'll want to come back, I don't know. But she's, uh, yeah, she's born here, so I brought my family up here, wife's here, so we, we love it, um, and we're here for, for the foreseeable. What's your favourite go-to location in Norfolk? Like, if you could have a day out, say you've got a free day, where would you go? And there is an incorrect answer here. <laughs> There's an incorrect answer? There is an incorrect answer. I'm definitely answer. going to say that, you should have warned me what, what not to say here. It's, it's a seaside location, and if you say that seaside location, I'm going to have to cut the podcast, that's it, we're not, we're not filming anymore. I'm trying to get, I don't know what you're getting at, well my, I don't know what my preferred is, but my usual day is in a soft play chasing a three-year-old. <laughs> nice, good. But, um, are you meaning Cromer or something like this? Cromer would be classy, yeah, do you like I've a bit of Cromer? Uh, yeah. I've been a couple of times, yeah. but a lot of the boys go quite often. Yeah, do so, they ever go to Great Yarmouth? Ah, I've been a couple of times. It's yeah, it's not. Do you great. like it? Because that's good. <laughs> I, was, I was born and raised there, Kenny, so be careful. Right. Um, it's okay. I'll go okay then. It's okay. <laughs> I've been a couple of times. Won't be back. Yeah. So, so speaking of locations, let, let's let's go to Glasgow now. Let's let's start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, am I pronouncing it correctly? Ruth Glen. Ruth Glen. Is that where you're from? So, where I was actually born, the hospital was Rutherglen. Right, okay. So it's just next to Cam's Lang where I was okay. brought up nice. and always lived. Okay. Um, if you spoke to somebody from Glasgow and you say it's Cam's Lang and there I am from, they would probably oh, give you right. one of them. But okay. uh, I loved it. It was yeah. I, had a, I had a great upbringing and um, that area for me, I think I'll always be home. I'll always go back to Glasgow. I think I've just said there I might be staying oh. Norwich when I finish. But right now, my wife as well. I think we. All, I think that'll always be where we go. We actually don't go home too often, so I think that's what makes yeah. us maybe want to when we finish. Um, but that's a long way away when I finish, obviously. But Glasgow's. I love Glasgow. Yes, yeah. it's, it's so. Good. I love it too. Have you been? To I have. Yeah. I've been to Edinburgh. I've never oh. been to. Glasgow. Edinburgh's lovely. I've been. Th I think I've been through Glasgow train station. Poor. And that's Poor. all yeah. I've seen of it. I think Glasgow should be the capital. Personally, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I would say Glasgow's a bit livelier and stuff like that. It's good. Edinburgh's like a posh yeah. Glasgow. Okay. Right, that, that is, okay. So I don't know if you would fancy that. That explains sure. why. It's not me. <laughs> it's not me, but um, yeah, Glasgow should be capital. And you are 
Am I right in saying on the Rangers side of the divide? Yeah. Am I allowed yeah. to say Funnily, that? Yeah. You can see that. I've and so, that times. is it is it family all Rangers yeah. fans, and that's just the way it is? Yeah. And so, did you Always did you go been. to the games as a kid, or? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just I was kind of a growing into it and I've, it's always been in Glasgow it's well I don't want to disrespect any other lesser or smaller teams but it's, it's Rangers or Celtic <laughs> everybody's got of a course. preference I was brought up Rangers mm-hmm. um, and it's just always been my family just always been Rangers uh, when I say my family my wife now she was the other half of Glasgow oh no yeah so her family so it wasn't a deal breaker her fam- no not quite her wow. family's quite um Full on Celtic. Ah, uh, you could say full on. How did you get past the old man then? I don't know. That well I done. I think I avoided it for a while, <laughs> and then I got my feet in the door. <laughs> then the conversation happened. After he realised I was actually a good guy. Oh, the it. charming wit and good yeah, looks. Yeah, I got in there. <laughs> but um, they are, yeah, I think I can say firmly yeah. Celtic. So there is, it's fair to say there's a, there is a, there is a pull for Scotland. You might end up there at some stage in the future. Is that uh, fair? Po- yeah, possibly. I think possibly. I, I have with a lot of Scottish players. Okay. You know, when when not when you start tailing off or whatever, but I think the last couple of years people do always kind of go up there and try and settle and and start to maybe be where they're going to live. And I think that 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 could happen for me. I don't know. Don't know what the future holds, but um, in terms of long term, I think it will be back home in Glasgow. So. It possibly could be that, yeah. Well, we do always do some outreach to people that may or may not know you. And um, we actually got in contact with Boydie, Chris Boyd, of course, absolute legend. Um, And uh, he was just very blunt, and I'll be brave. He just said, (laughs) um, morning, mate. Yeah, all good, just busy work. Ask him, when when is he signing for Rangers with a winky (laughs) tongue face? I got asked that so much, honestly. See, especially when... the, The media were kind of pre-contract signing that was the link wasn't it it was like yeah. is Kenny going back to Rangers was it ever a possibility at, at that stage um, no not really yeah. not, there's always talk and that the, there's nothing ever been in front of me mm. saying there you go uh, pulling at my heartstrings but in the past there has been um, more than just paper talk and stuff like that but it's never material, mm. materialised into anything uh, would I love it one day? Of, of course. course. I yeah. mean, if you if you'd brought up and that's who you support, yeah, and, of course. Um, of course, I would, and my family would be over the moon. I'm Not sure. Your father-in-law, though. My father, <laughs> oh, my father-in-law. That, that uh, might be it. Numbers out his phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. What I, I always find it fascinating, Kenny, when we speak to to players, past and present, because Chris and I, I'm sure, growing up, we wanted to be footballers, but you get to a point where you're like, not quite good enough. What was the moment of you growing up when it, it, it became sort of a reality when you thought, oh, okay, I've got a chance here? I don't, I, I don't think a moment stands out as such. Um, I used to train Friday nights <clears throat> and when I kept, that's when everybody goes out and, mm. you know, when you start getting to that age, you're allowed out past, you know, dark and stuff. And I was still going to train on Friday night and I was like, I must love this. Everybody's out enjoying ourselves, yeah. and I'm and yeah. I'm away training. So uh, I don't know when I when I felt like this could be a career. It's obviously something, as you say, most young men and women obviously want to do. But you get to that stage where some people make the decisions. They, you know, this isn't going to work. Mm. But um, I was just always because, by the way, if I didn't, I would be in all sorts of trouble. I would. I do not know really? where I would be. Do not know what was I would there be ever a back, backup plan. Or was there no, ever there wasn't. Like sounds bad. That it sounds. I don't know. Arrogant. I don't know what it is. But iron <clears throat> brew factory, maybe. <laughs> Possibly <laughs> something like that. Something. Something. Pretty bang average. Anyway. Okay. Bang <laughs> average. I done. Um, I don't know if it happens in England, but in Scotland, you you do like a you need to go to college on a Wednesday when you're like scholar, okay. which is quite good yeah. actually. And I done construction. Did so you? I was like, I, but you would go. You would build a wall. This height. Mine <laughs> right. would be leaning away you would try and <laughs> you know spark a plug up it wasn't for me yeah I couldn't see you as a no, sparky no, I have to say sparky. Kenny yeah I'm not I'm trying to think what else we've done just all kind of a construction stuff and that yeah I had no chance so what were your parents like then Kenny like were they what, what, what sort of support did they give you because 
there is this whole thing of like, do do the parents sort of support your ambition to be a footballer, or do they say, oh come on, Kenny, you need to have, actually go for a more realistic job? Like, how did that work? Um, well, it, when I got to about 15, 16, when you when you're looking at your first kind of a scholar, uh, I got offered one quite quite early, so I didn't. They didn't really have the decision of saying, do you know what, you need to kind of go here, you need to try something else. And I suppose I got a wee bit lucky in that sense where the backup plan wasn't needed. The boy with the backup plan that I didn't have wasn't needed. Yeah. But they, um, they they never really forced me into it and never pushed for me to be a They knew how desperate I was. I'm sure they were desperate for me as well. Well, I know they were. But um, everything they'd done for me was just right and just... They, like Mark Brigham was excellent. My parents gave me everything I needed without being spoiled or anything like that. But um, where I'm from, it's I've already mentioned. It's not the. It's, it's quite rough to be honest. What do you um, say? Scotland no very bonny, don't you say no, that? No, nah, that's bonny. No, no, that's no. not Glasgow. Okay, no, no. <laughs> Where's that? that? Where am I? Where am um, I with that? You're up past Dundee. All oh, right, okay, okay. <laughs> Dundee and further up. But um, no, nah, they they everything I I needed to kind of pursue my dream as such. They gave me and and they they pushed me on to that and then when I became full time it was you know I kind of I got some lucky breaks here and there and managed to secure a contract. Well, so St Mirren was the the breakthrough. Yeah. I think Scotland's often overlooked in terms of the the players that the SPL produces and you were obviously a, a graduate of, of of there. What was it like coming through at St Mirren? And then obviously Aberdeen was probably where you became more well known on yeah. the scene. Um, but it. it it never looks an easy place to sort of learn your trade. Was nah, it? Was it brutal? It was tough. So originally, I was I would have been seventeen, eighteen, and I went on loan to Arbroath, yeah, which is north. Which is were they top, top tier or are they? No, no they were they were League One. So it's yeah. Premier League, Championship, League One. They Fine. were League One at the time, but not, struggling League One. Not very bunny. Not very bunny. <laughs> that would they, they would have said that up there. That's up next <laughs> to Dundee. So that was not very bunny, and then. I went there because my assistant manager at the time was mates with the manager. I see. So I get sent out there to go and basically toughen up. I was a scrawny wee kid, so like tiny. That's why, so I was at Rangers as a youth boy. That's why yeah. it kind of I didn't, they, I wasn't big enough, wasn't strong enough, whatever it was. And I ended up on loan at Arbroath uh, for, I went before Christmas. It was like an emergency loan for a month. That was a, so how old are you at this at this stage? 17, 18. Wow, okay. you just got beat up. Oh, I got battered. I Did went, you? Yeah, I got battered. Hated every minute of it. Um, That's the thing with the loan though, isn't it? Right? It, did, it did help me though. Right. It actually did. But it was, it was, oh, there was some tough times in there. We got mm. relegated. Oh. That, <laughs> so we got relegated. Um, and I was just this kid, you know, obviously it's, at the time as well, it was like, guys livelihoods like this mm, was extra income for yeah. them they were part time and it was like I didn't really appreciate what I had at that time until I went there mm. at the end of the season you see these guys absolutely gutted getting really I was like oh shit. yeah I'm do you I need to go back, back here that, and walk my nuts off basically do you look back at that period though thankful <laughs> almost the making because I know James Madison's been quite public with his uh, loan to, to Aberdeen of being like that was the making of me at that time because he had an opportunity to play for Norwich I think at that first team but decided he wanted to go up to Scotland it must yeah. have been you must look back at that and go yeah that was a, a yeah, pivotal you, you moment you grow up you yeah. do grow up um, the manager at the time was Jim Weir I was there at, he's known in Scotland and stuff but he whether I was 17 or 18 or not he would he would go through you I remember he took me off. Peter Head, you won't know where Peter Head is. No. Four and a half hours north of Glasgow. Oh, Peter. Oh, sorry. Peter yeah, Head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, so okay. I went. I, we went and played Peter Head away. Yeah. My dad used to come to all my games. Yeah. Four and a half hours drive. Came up, dragged at half time. No. So my dad was. Uh, he was probably more disappointed with me than the manager was that day, <laughs> having to drive what, eight nine hour round trip to watch forty five minutes. But I was. Uh, I was on the road back down before 90 minutes was finished, which was a, a bonus for him. That was good. Uh, well, you obviously get through, through that. Ab the move to Aberdeen, that must have been big at that period. So how old are you at this stage? Sort of early 20s, aren't you? Yeah, I was, I was in my 20s. Aberdeen, um, big club. Must be yeah, chuffed it was, with that. It was. It was um, at the time, I'd done, I'd done decent at St Mirren. Yeah. And 
we were struggling. So I went in the January, but we ended up getting relegated that season. We had been through a couple of managers. Danny Lennon left. Tommy Craig was assistant. Tommy Craig took the job. I think he then got the sack. We were, we were struggling massively. The, you know, the club was in a bit of... Um, there was a clear-out happening. There was some older players and stuff. So it was tough times for the club. And we were going down and... I didn't jump ship or anything like that, but I knew I had to kind of move on to, to better myself. And I went to Aberdeen. Derek McInnes, who was for Glasgow as well, um, I'd already knew him, and he was he was so good for me. Mm. Derek McInnes was excellent. And I, I, again, I got lucky with that going in with a manager like that. Mm. Uh, obviously, su- successful times at, at Aberdeen. So you were there for three years, weren't you? Over over a hundred games. When did you? F- was was there ever a dream to move to England? Was that always on the highlight, or, or, or was it Norwich? Came, that came calling that thought okay that this is a viable option now I think for see most Scottish players now well out, out with the old firm probably th- their ambition will be to come to England yeah, I don't yeah. think there's any doubt about that the um, just everything about it you know you, you want to come down here and put yourselves against the best um, mm. Premier League is the best obviously we're in Championship now such a tough league everybody knows so Scottish players and because Scottish football gets battered so much down here, it, it does though, do you know what I mean? Is it's that a like, fair assessment? Or do I you would think say it's so, do you not think so? Even in the changing well, room, like, <laughs> if a game's on in the, the canteen, yeah. lads are like, oh, who's this? Is like, that right? Yeah. I've seen two, I've seen two, I mean, you're going to be biased here a little bit, I've, I've seen four Celtic games, because I'm sort of half Celtic, but okay, we'll keep that quiet. Okay. Um, I've seen four. One was like League Two quality, and it was horrendous. And one was probably maybe relegation Premier League so I can sort of see there's there's a real contrast yeah. I think I think it's getting better though now isn't it, it right? is, surely but, but the only thing now with Scottish football is players are coming down England younger okay so they're now getting noticed at 17 18 right, okay and Premier League players uh, Premier League teams championship teams are taking a bit of a punt because you can mm. get them pretty cheap yeah, let's be honest yeah, that, yeah. and that's what um, the English teams will do they'll try mm. and get um, if you look at people like Andy Robertson, mm. Kieran Tierney, I know Kieran Tierney went for a lot of money, but yeah. these players are trying to get them younger yeah. now and get them yeah. get them cheaper, basically. Yeah. But, there, but there is, there's quality up mm. there, no doubt. Well, I think it's fair to say, I'll be brave here, we got you on the cheap, really. I mean, it wasn't a lot of money for Kenny, was no, it really, it considering how, how many years and how many games yeah. you've played for us? And that was a wacky move, wasn't it? Because then you got loaned back didn't you yeah so how did that affect your mindset like could i don't really understand how that how would that it work was um it was actually good right it was good and i know because i'd signed here so then norwich fans would be looking saying oh what's he like and there's a bit of pressure on that way right but on the the other hand again my contract was coming to an end at aberdeen i'd told them i wasn't signing again and um, because i wanted to move down south um and you know thing, things just worked out well that way because I'd then secured my future and knew what I was doing so then I could relax a bit and just go and enjoy my football yeah. for the next six months and that's what happened and at the time um, obviously I signed under Farke he had basically says that I probably wasn't going to play much between January and, and uh, the summer so right. he, he was honest with me he was like listen I've got players here who are playing in these positions we're trying to build something come in the summer get a pre-season with me because obviously you had to it took you a couple of months to of kind course, of get in his ways yeah. and stuff like that. So he was like, probably not going to play much. And I was mm. like, well, that doesn't really suit me. And then that's how the, the oh, loan right, okay. came about. Um, but what, was there a guarantee? Was he sort of saying you'll get game time next season? N- not no. Particular, no, not So it was a risk for you as well? Yeah, of course. Because um, same as any player coming down, from, you need to prove yourself. And that's, that's, mm. what, that's why... I think a lot of Scottish players do so well down here because they came down and just want to prove a lot of people mm-hmm. wrong. Mm-hmm. And you work harder than a lot of people to do that. So uh, the, I don't think there's ever a guarantee of going to a club and mm-hmm. getting minutes and playing or whatever. But I came down in the summer after I actually finished that season pretty well. You did, yeah. Aberdeen, yeah. I finished it pretty well. And, I, and again, I put that down to because I felt like I was comfortable and I, my future secured and I knew where I was going. Within this time, I'd come down a couple of times um, sort my house so I was ready to go in the summer so everything was like in place so for me just yeah. to kick in I remember that period well because we signed you and, and you know people have, uh, would have watched a few games but it's fair to say wouldn't have been completely aware of what you were like 
But then we obviously became very aware. We thought, oh, this player. We're on Kenny watch. Kenny's right, coming to, and, and you, I remember a couple of the goals you scored. There was almost then pressure because you, the limelight was on you. We'd yeah. all watched you, and then you've got to come in and 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 prove yourself. Am I right in saying you were then injured at the start of that following campaign? That, yeah. yeah. So the first, oh, who did we play? I think we might have played Birmingham away first game of the season. Yeah, on on El scored. On yeah. El scored. Yeah, 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 yeah he did. Yeah. Top off as he does. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> Quite, um, yeah. And then we played, oh, who was a cup game midweek? It w- we won, didn't we? Crawley? So, no. Accrington or something? I can't remember. Yeah. It was, we beat them. It was a, yeah, we beat them. Yeah. Easy. Um, but I came on at half time. Came on at half time in the game. And after 10 minutes, I, knew I'd done, I finished the game, but I knew I'd done my ankle after 10 minutes. And that was it. So the two games I had. Two games I had. And. Um, I was like, I'm in, I'm in trouble here because that yeah. took me. So it was like a, it was an injury that was touch and go whether it gets surgery. I didn't get the surgery. So it was like a 10 week injury, didn't get the surgery, 10 weeks went past. I needed the surgery. Oh. So I came back, it wasn't right. And then we decided to get the surgery, which took me another 12 weeks. So it ended up four months, over four months. Wow. And, and, what, and what's spinning through your head at that point? Because you, you've had a good end of the season with Aberdeen. You've come in, Norwich fans are excited. You're, you know, confident. You've you sort of found your house down here and then bang, four mm. months. That, that was, you must be thinking, what have I done? Yeah, that was, that was a hard time because, you know, it was so good that we were doing well and that was like a distraction for me away from the disappointment of being injured, the bad news. Um, but then you're like, I might not be needed here. Mm. And I've played two games. So we got to Christmas and I'm I'm half thinking, I'm going to be fit, start of January. Mm. Do I go on loan, try and get games? And that that's where I was at. And that's probably where the manager and the club were at. We, we never had that conversation. But I think that's probably where everybody was at. I'd mm. played two games. I needed fitness, whatever it was. And then again, the bits of luck, luck, that sounds horrific, but we got three, maybe four midfielders mm. injured mm. at the end of January. Right, okay. Um, and it was, we played, we played away to Preston. I think we lost three, three nil maybe. Okay. I, I forget all that. I don't, I don't remember any. We played <laughs> Preston in Birmingham uh, and we stayed away for the four days because okay. we played Saturday, Tuesday, right, whatever yeah. it was. And uh, within these two games, we got, I think it was Tets, Mario, maybe Moritz. Three mm. of them get injured. Yeah. And uh, we played, no, it was Bolton. It was Bolton up there. And we played Bolton the next game, and I played and scored and set one up. I missed a penalty. Was that like 5 nil or something? Because we won 1 4 nil, but I missed a penalty. <laughs> yeah, that day. yeah. I recall uh, that. And then oh, I, I kind of got myself. I'm not forgiving <laughs> you, Kenny. I'm yeah, not forgiving you. <laughs> we were 4 nil up. Uh, it was. It was Remy Matthews in goals. He just left. He was a good guy. Because wasn't Timu on a hat? I, 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 my mind's going back. I think Timu had scored twice. And then did you take the penalty? And you can't just say I took a hat to go Timu. Was it? Wasn't there? Wasn't was there like, like a penalty? Like there was that. a big penalty saga, wasn't there? Like, like so many players had missed so many there penalties was, that yeah. season. That's what it was. That's the one. It was. It was that one, wasn't it? We were. We were about. <laughs> but everyone missed a penalty. Yeah, yeah, you I obviously think we'd kept scored rotating. One or two and like eight. It was horrific. Yeah. And that was my fault. And I was like, I'll take this. <laughs> it, was, it's not, it, was, it wasn't even a miss. It was horrific. I was going to recall that game now. But, um, uh, so that was, that was my kind of a first game back from injury. Yeah. And because of injuries, I got that bit of luck. Mm. We went on a bit of a run after that. And uh, I played, I think, every game to the end of the season. That's what. That, that's why going back sort of through your career, just to remind myself, I was like, I couldn't really re- remember that injury because it felt like you'd hit the ground running yeah. so quickly. Mm. Almost forgot that kind of first half of that season. What were your initial kind of thoughts on on Daniel Farker and, and the and the team surrounding him? Because it was a it was a new era for Norwich City, and it was an era that was undoubtedly successful. And you've you know you guys and Daniel have written themselves in in, in folklore for the, the way that you went about mm. business, the 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 achievements that you all went under. It must have been such a culture shock for you though, sort of Aberdeen to, to Daniel yeah. Farker. Well, as I say, I came down a couple of times from the January to actually coming and I would train with a team um, a couple of times and it, it was it was so different. Like the difference was was bigger than I probably imagined at the time. Mm. 
because I thought like I was doing well in Scotland I thought like I'll go down at the time I think that year we finished quite low actually I think what was Norwich. Daniel's first year yeah yeah it wasn't great yeah, like yeah, it wasn't that. very good yeah. Yeah. I was like oh, I'll Mad- go down fancied myself kept us alive, yeah. Yeah. Mad- yeah, yeah that was a year Madders yeah. Yeah. broke onto the scene big time so yeah. fancied myself a wee bit I came down <laughs> being involved right away but um, it, it was it was such a shock but it was even more of a shock when I got that injury and I found myself mm. twiddling my thumbs and nobody, and because of it, not that nobody was interested in me, but as I say, I felt I probably not needed here. So that made it even harder. But then when you when you kind of get working and you're doing what you're there to do, it, everything, in, as you yeah. say, a lot of people don't really know about that mm. first five months because we were doing so well. So it wasn't like, yeah. oh, how's he not playing or how? We were doing so well, so you don't really think mm. about that too much. It was an amazing team that season, wasn't it, Chris? You look back and it yeah, was remarkable. Yeah, it was. It was phenomenal. We should talk about eighteen nineteen, shouldn't we? We should. Really? Let's get stuck into it. What What are your? What do you think about when when someone says Norwich City twenty eighteen nineteen? What are the first things that pop into your head? I, I feel apart like... from your famous drink at the end, which we <laughs> yeah, will go into. Of course. Obviously. Um, I th- what's even thinking back? I felt like. No disrespect to any other team, but I feel like things were so easy for us. Really? Honestly, but you can disrespect ex- other teams in this podcast. That's, <laughs> fine. That's fine. I do every week, mate. No, <laughs> no, but we, um, I feel like we did. We, yeah. we, were, uh, we were so confident in everything we were doing. Everything that we'd done mm. j- just worked. But where did then, that come from? Because the previous season was so poor. Well, when I, when I used to come down, up and down, and I came to a couple games, and I think... Towards the end of that season, there was like a six or seven game where there was no goals, mm. didn't score. Mm. Six, and I was going down and watching, like, mm. yeah. Hopefully, that changes good. in the summer <laughs> somehow. Um, but then the difference, it, it was just like a such a switch. And um, as I say, even at the start of that season when I wasn't involved, mm-hmm. some it was a joy to watch. And I think the way we went and won that league was incredible. Everybody always remembers that Leeds game as well. Yeah, of course. That Leeds game was sensational. Yeah. Uh, that, that, was when, that was when we went, right, that's yeah. one up. Yeah. That, w- that was us up, that game. Because um, that was a good Leeds side as well. Very good yeah. Leeds side. And even going back to Swansea uh, at the weekend there, yeah. I, could, I think they beat us a couple of weeks before and went above us, if I remember correctly. And they went mental in the changing room. Tunes were up full, yeah. banging the walls. And we were sitting... I think we were like still clear and second. We were sitting there like we were at the bottom of the league. We were like, mm, "What's happening here?" Hilarious, yeah. It was, my, and then we just went on another run and just romped it. So really, what you're saying, Kenny, is it was a walk in the park. <laughs> Obviously, we beat Ipswich, which was a piece of piss as, as always. And actually, one of the things I think is fair to say as well is like there was a real togetherness about the place, wasn't there? It seemed like um, the, the the players were 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 so well entwined and well drilled and, and the fitness was insane and we were just at, we were destroying everyone really we, we were at least passing them to death so they couldn't compete with us and the atmosphere that season as well was just electric wasn't it yeah. and what was what was that like for you as well because again no disrespect to, to to Scotland if it's not the old firm I suspect that you probably went to Carrow and that was a bit like oh wow okay here we go yeah. so what was that like for you? Uh, to be to be honest, the atmosphere up, up in Aberdeen was, was really right, good. Yeah. It was really good actually, um, and we were doing quite well. So it was yeah. like quite a successful time for the club. But um, coming here in that season, and after the start we'd had to the season, the expectation was raised. The performance level was raised, so everybody was ju- the, the whole place was just vibrant. And even even coming to the games, and you know, it could have been nil nil at half time or whatever, but everybody. Everybody was just expecting mm-hmm. something to mm-hmm. happen, something magic to happen, something to do something great. Pookie, nobody could live with him. It was, it was just, yeah, that season was uh, was incredible. When you, when you think back, you, when you're playing as well, you don't really think back to times. It's when you're finished, you probably look back and say, oh, that was incredible. But when you when you think back to some of the games and some of the atmospheres at Carra Road and, and the away fans that year, it was... Yeah, it was it, it, it was an amazing mix, wasn't it? Because it, it was almost an unknown. You had players in there. You mentioned Timu, Emi Buendia, players that we hadn't been used to watching at Carrow Road, players that we didn't know much about mm. before they came to Norwich City. I guess it was similar for you, like being thrown in with lads that you maybe weren't too aware of and it just all clicking. Yeah, well, it was 
the culture was so different because I've came from a changing room with mainly Scottish, some yeah. English, not really foreign. Came down, I think we had 12 Germans at the mm. time. So it was like, obviously the, all the staff and stuff were German. So it was the training regime, all that kind of a seemed a bit foreign. Um, so it was so different, but it was such a good group of lads. Listen, when you're winning, it always is. Everybody's <laughs> happy together and that's always how it is. Um, and it, I didn't, I didn't know any lads when I went there, um, except Pookie, who had a stinker up at Celtic. Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. Of course, but uh, have you wound him up about that? Always. <laughs> me and Grant will give us, give him a bit of that. But he, uh, he actually quite enjoys it. Um, but it, it was just so different coming down here and just, um, as I say, when you when you're winning, it's it's easy just to get that togetherness. Mm. I must admit, Kenny, I'm a bit surprised that you remember large parts of it because, of course, um, at, at the end, um, your, your infamous moment, the, the mad dog moment, um, talk me through that. I mean, you went for it. Yeah. And it was, and you, that was like cult hero status achieved. I know, I know. And it was, um, people obviously still, when I, see people out and about in the city, they'll still say to me and stuff. Offer you a drink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish. Um, but, you know, when I look back, I cringe at myself a wee bit at some of the stuff that I've done. No. I do, honestly. What, the hat? A wee bit. Oh, a bit. no, just, it's just, class. But then I'm like, oh, who cares? I'm, yeah. The it's moment so was so good and stuff like that and the success we had, all the emotions coming out. Yeah. So then again, cut myself some slack with that. There was one thing I do remember at the time, you'll giggle at this. Jack and I had genuine concerns for your welfare. And I know that everyone, the Norwich fans watching this and listening all around the world so will say the same thing. People, my parents. Mate, mate, everyone was tweeting saying, like, where is Kenny? Like, yeah. even the players were saying, like, you know, we don't know where he is. Like, what, what was he doing? I don't know what I was doing. What, did you know where no, you went? <laughs> no, it was a bit, that was a stag do that weekend. Uh, it, it was... It was Blackburn. Was it Blackburn yeah. at home? Yeah. Marianne. Blackburn at home and then that was it. Just mm. yeah. Carnage. Um, carnage. That's and then strong words. So my family was down. So we went out, got on it. We were all steaming drunk. Got back home at, I don't know what time, seven or eight in the morning. In wow. fact, it was before that. It would have been before that because... <laughs> it wasn't, was it? It was not. <laughs> the only reason I know it was because for whatever reason... The um, the bus parade and the meeting up point was eight o'clock the next day, oh which was God. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Whoever whoever done that should have been sat <laughs> well, on the spot. But we I think missed I'd, it, didn't we? Yeah, we I missed think, it because we got on at Villa, didn't yeah. we as well? Oh, oh that was Villa. In yeah. fact, we flew home. Ah, that was it. Wasn't Blackburn? It was Villa because we got promoted yeah. against Blackburn. Pro- yeah, and then so yeah. it was Villa, it was yeah. Villa. So I had um, so obviously John McGinn was there. Yeah, and they had nothing to play for so he put my family in his box oh, so my family were all amazing. steaming drunk yeah. in this box and they end up on the pitch and stuff with me at the end yeah which which was quite nice but then when we got home my family all came down uh, we had uh, we had stuff at the club we were all we were out all night uh, my wife was pregnant so she was a Taxi, we can say, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> she won't want me to say no. Oh, she, dear. She's, she's still gutted about missing the celebrations. Um, so she was pregnant at the time with her daughter. So it was just a case of just constant. And I think I got about an hour's sleep that night. And then we were up at eight o'clock. Mm. My old man woke me up oh, no. with a beer. <laughs> oh, that's class. And I kind of I just looked up. That is brilliant. One eye open, looking up at him like, ah, I can't. And he was like... I what, bet you drank yeah. it though, didn't oh, you? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. He reminded me that. Um, nice class. I, ha- I think I'd forgot that we'd won the league, but he reminded me. Down it went. <laughs> Couple down, spewed. Oh, and really? then that was me, brand new, good to fine. go. Well, yeah. you say brand new, Kenny. I'll, again, I'll be a bit brave with you here, felt mate. Felt good. On, I felt honest, good. You, you look like you felt good on the bus. Um, it, I think it was magic. I've got a picture I'll show you afterwards. There's a picture of, I think it's Magic Marco, literally holding on to you. And yeah. you're like leaning over the bus with your shampers. And it's just... Yeah. So we, we went back to... So it was uh, Russ and Wesley's game that day. Yes. Of course. And yeah. we done the, yeah. we were around the yeah. pitch. So we yeah. were up in a lounge. We'd done the bus. Got to the stadium, went up to the lounge, and obviously free bar and stuff. And uh, it continued. No, it wasn't allowed to continue because oh, I was you bad. Were, 
You got barred. You were barred. From the bar. Was, you were barred from the bar. Barred from the bar. Well, there you go. Wow. There's did, the title. Did they know <laughs> who you were or? <laughs> I had a bit too much, I think. Right. Yeah. So, so what, what I put, did you it was just say? You, seats, put three together. I had a wee half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Me half an hour. That was me, and then I was brand new after that in, half an in, hour. In your club suit, or were you? What were you wearing at the I think time? With tracksuits on that day. Yeah, with our tracksuits on. So I think I remember seeing you walk around the pitch, and I would describe you as hovering. <laughs> yeah, that was. I think that was after my half an hour. Good. Yep. And that shows sleep's yeah. important part of you know. Swap I got. Um, You've got to go. I had some Red you. Bull, not just Red Bull on its own, but I had <laughs> yeah. some Red Bull within some drinks, yeah. and that was me. Yeah, it was Good brilliant. All jokes aside, it was a momentous month that I think because you know it was it, football wise, it was brilliant, and Norwich fans hadn't quite experienced it like that. And the connection we felt with you as a group was incredible. I remember the you know the Instagrams in the days and weeks preceding, it just looked like you were having such a good time. It yeah. felt like we were on mm. that journey, and yeah, you might cringe, and I guess we all do when we look back at sort of our, our drunken antics, but that summer and maybe you don't even realize but you wrote yourself in Norwich City history and not many players can say that and yeah you must look back with fondness 100 percent. and you as fans and we spoke about me growing up supporting Rangers like seeing your team doing mm. stuff like that is it doesn't always happen I know it's it's been <clears throat> good been lucky yeah recently but uh, it doesn't always happen so you, you need to mm. enjoy the times in that summer um that summer was also pretty yeah. good mm. like just a big long Stagged. Absolutely. And of course, then you, you've you've then gone and won the title again when we were all at home. H- how did how did that compare as well? And um, I guess linked to that last comment, Kenny, like, do you feel do you feel satisfied with your body of work at Norwich City, or do you think there's more to come from Kenny? I think there's more to come, but I think I don't think I can say I'm satisfied now when I'm just signing you a deal because I still want to mm. do more, obviously. Um, like everybody and that's why people come to Norwich that's why because they see the success that we're having they want to be part of that everybody wants to win things people go through a career and have very good careers and not win anything mm. and they'll be satisfied at the end mm. but when, you, when you're when you in this and winning things you, you're desperate for more and mm. obviously we've had the two promotions the two disappointments and you, ju- you just want more that's why Right now, I wouldn't say I'm satisfied because I, I just feel like there's more there for us. We'll, we'll definitely get on to the disappointments because I think it's only right we talk about it. I want to <coughs> go to Manchester City though. So we, we get promoted early on. I think there was a few little niggles at, at the start of the season. We beat a Newcastle. Yep. That was the piggy. We're hat-trick. flying was high. Hat-trick. Everyone's yeah. like, wow, this, you know, we can play this expansive football. I remember. Um, the national outlets and the media are all like, this is a real fresh look to, to the Premier League. Amazing that Norwich are going for it. Along come Manchester City. And I was saying to Chris earlier, we sit in the Barclay, and the amount of times I see you make that front post run and you so often get a flick. Yeah. That Manchester City game, though, it wasn't just a flick. No, it, it flew it into the... Full in, contact. I mean, uh, that was a... We were saying, I mean, we've been going for you know years and years. In terms of upsets... That's the the best it's we've the ever one. had. It. Yeah. If you, if, if you look at an isolated moment since I've been here, that's the best mm. for me. Although obviously in the end, it, that season didn't go as planned. But mm-hmm. in an isolated moment, mm. when that hit the back of the net, and because City were the team, the team yeah. like nobody could get near them, mm. and that put us one nil up, and the, the place erupted. Mm. We could, I think we can agree on that. The place erupted, and it was. It was just one of the moments. It was like, wow, this is this is incredible. And obviously, winning the game, it made exactly even more. So often it can happen where you take the lead against these yeah. big teams and go and lose. Four, well, it's five, expected, one. even if you take yeah. the lead against City. It's like mm. we take three one just now. I I watched your interview, your post match after that, Kenny, because obviously they pulled you because you scored the goal of the game, and um, you sort of gave it the you know no we've we've got a good group, we had confidence and and blah blah blah. Lies. <laughs> you have to admit, Kenny. Like yeah. you must have been shitting yourself. No, you, nine players injured. Yeah, it was. Like, it was. Uh, was it Tate and Amadou centre half? It Everyone was. was yeah, yeah. Tate and Amadou yeah. centre half. Um, so we were a bit, great wall of North. Like, <laughs> back. Uh, yeah, it was. It, it was incredible. And you go on against Man City. You're desperate to do well. Everybody's like. 
all the rest kind of thing. It's mm. just on you go, try your best. But that that time was was incredible. But the way we played, because the way they played, kind of suited us a wee bit. Like the way we played and we got round yeah. and we we spoke about that so much. And against the ball, they weren't what they are today. I don't yeah. think. Um, but everybody just feared them so much with the ball. Mm. But it was. Uh, it was actually deserved as well. Like of course the other it was. goals, I know the, th- the the third goal was a mistake, but the second goal as well, the Beautiful. play for it, it was yeah. it was actually deserved. That was that was a that was a real highlight. Although yeah. that season was, it, it, it felt like we were in you know the Newcastle game. That win, the start was brilliant. I guess we ended up you know we, we all know how it ended. Do do you feel like there were points in that season where we kind of <laughs> went away from what? In terms of we, we were trying to play this all encompassing style, fart ball, was it possible to do that and, and, and remain in the Premier League? Because that was the intention. We tried it. Unfortunately, we, we, we came up short. I don't, I, I, it's not impossible. Mm. But I think we were a, a bit naive as to what we were trying to achieve. Right, like, okay. I think the more it went on and we still tried to play out, still tried to do all the right things. It was encouraged, it was brilliant to be involved in because it was lovely football and stuff, but, you know, one bag pass, goal. Mm, and that, that yeah. was the naivety and that was, we were getting punished left, right and centre. And that, that, that was the problem really, that the quote that we're up against was just mm. exceptional. And we did have the couple good results and then I think teams started giving us a lot more respect so kind of a let us have it a bit mm. let us have and then they came after us at the right time and mm. I think we were a bit naive as to oh, we're doing okay here we've got the ball and one minute you've got the ball and five seconds later in your own net mm. and I think that's where we were a wee bit uh, we get a bit comfortable in that style and maybe not as I don't know what the word to use we weren't maybe dogging enough or like streetwise or whatever it was mm. I don't know the Holt, one, he says that streetwise he said we weren't streetwise enough uh, so. it could have been that um, <laughs> but there was a lot of players in that squad that hadn't played Premier League football before. yeah and, and everybody was that was the that was the style that everybody was brought in mm. to play mm. um, so it, it was tough and I think after the City game we went on a horrific run yeah yes and it was like <laughs> yeah I wish we never beat them now. We thought we were <laughs> thought we were the dog no, balls, no, no. but it was um, we went on a horrific run, and then it was a wee bit like, right, we need to something needs to change here. We need to really stand up. And unfortunately, it just when you get in that kind of a way in the Premier League, it's hard to come out of it. I bet uh, it was a it was a fascinating and intriguing couple of years that preceded that because we came back down. I think unlike the first promotion you guys went through, there was an expectation about, because we'd retained most of our players. We knew that Daniel had done it before. You guys, I think the football you played that season was actually more impressive than the first time. It was beautiful to watch. We weren't there, but it, it was, and we know this firsthand, I'm speaking to fans, it was a light in what was a really gloomy year for Norwich City yeah. fans. So that was a huge moment. You got through that and then you, What's the mood like in that summer going back into the Premier League? Because you're like, okay, we've we've been here before. We maybe have it sussed out a little bit. Was there more confidence around the place? I think so. Uh, well, there was, there was, um, and when we were doing media stuff or press or speaking to people, everybody would have been saying the same thing, and maybe the thing that everybody expected is to say, oh, we're we're better this time round, but we genuinely like we felt that we weren't mm-hmm. saying that because it was the thing to say. We felt like, do you know what we we know what to expect now. We we kept most of the squad together. Um, it was it, there was definitely more. We expected more within the place, and I think everybody else did as well because yeah. we had um, a good enough squad, I think, to stay up. <laughs> but um, again, the, the start we had was. Oh, it's horrendous. Incredible, mm. really. I mean, bad luck, but also some horrific displays as well and, yeah. and obviously really bad results as well. Yeah, absolutely. What's, what's, your, what's, your, what's your thought process on, on Daniel Farker, Kenny? Because do you, as a group of players, when unfortunately he was told time's time, were you like, oh, do you know what, as a group, I think, 
I think we're to maybe take a bit more responsibility for that or do you think it was the right time or like what, what's your how was that time when Daniel left uh, it was it was a bit strange it was right before an international break obviously we beat Brentford mm. Brentford that day so it was like everybody was on a, like a bit of a high because it was a big game because we felt mm. we were against them towards the bottom and it was a big result um, but there was still that naivety a wee bit at the start of that season um, and the club maybe saw that but in terms of as a player when a manager loses his job you, I think you need to take a lot of responsibility mm. not mm. a little bit of responsibility I think you need to take a lot of responsibility because you and I played a lot under Daniel so mm. me I did that and I think a lot of people are the same you know he's giving you this opportunity and you've kind of let him down a wee bit and let everybody down but mm-hmm. the club felt that was like the right time and mm-hmm. whatever is and it was fine the success that we'd had but yeah. we wanted to be successful by staying in the league and at that mm-hmm. moment in time we were in a bit of a sticky situation um, things were tough obviously nobody ever wants especially as a player and a manager that they've been through so much with yeah. so much success with legend two, ti- um, yeah, two titles it's, it's hard to see someone go like that mm. but the club felt that it was right at that time they obviously had their reasons and um, felt like we couldn't su- sustain Premier League status mm-hmm. with Daniel there and, and that was their decision as players you don't you've got obviously zero say in that yeah. the only say you've got is before it happens mm. when it's too late Turn on the pitch I think it's interesting as, as a fan you, you see cycles with players you see the, the come up and the kind of the, the celebration of the good times and then players often become kind of scapegoats and I think we've maybe seen that with you in maybe the past season I was interested what Stuart Webber said when you signed your new contract that it was a reward for a player that stuck with us through ups and downs and is an integral part of our plans going forward and that you've continued to develop your leadership. I guess your role has changed. But because you've, you're one of the more long-standing players now and one of the more senior players, it, often poor performances or poor runs come to your <clears throat> front door, I guess. Has that been a, an interesting kind of thing to deal with and, and adapt in how you face up to certain things? Um. It's not nice. No. It's, it's definitely not nice. Do you feel no, it? I, I think I'm quite good at dealing with it, mm. to be honest. And because I deal with it well, I would rather it me than be yeah. someone else that maybe I play next to or a younger player or whatever. I, I would rather it's me. So in, in terms of that, I'm like, right, fine, I'll deal with it. Mm. But it's, it's, it's obviously not nice. Mm. Like, I get the frustration. We're not doing well. I'm a fan myself. I'll still watch Rangers and I'll be like, oh, shit, blah, 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 whatever. But I think there is a line. Sometimes the line will be stepped. Fine, I get it. Social media, usually, that's just how things are now. Um, people have got the license to say and do what they want to to players because as play- like as players, we get that it's your club. You've been, you know, you supported the club yeah. since you were a kid. Yeah. You've grew into this. Players come and go, and that that's the reality of it. Um, some players will be longer than, and when you're here for longer, you kind of grow to love the club. Mm. And for me, if I was thrown the towel in, if I were, you know, if I had chucked it, mm. take everything. But I feel like I've always gave everything, mm. and that's that's why I'm like, it, it's harsh sometimes. But I get the. I get the criticism totally, but the the personal stuff can be a wee bit, a wee bit touching. More, m- not me, my family more, because mm. I don't really, I don't really use social media that much. You've got it. I've got it. So do you? So after a game, and say maybe we've conceded, or maybe even you've misplaced a pass and it's led to a goal. Are you like, oh shit, here we go again. It's Kenny the scapegoat and I'm going to get loads of abuse online. Do you read it? Do you turn no, your notifications I'll, off? I'll see, I'll see bits, but I won't. Right. That, that won't be my thought. Like, oh, people are going to come after me on social media. Like, I, right. I'm not I'm not like that. I, you know, it will definitely, it, I can guarantee it affects a lot of people. There's, yeah. there's no doubt about it. It affects a lot of people. And I'm not saying it doesn't affect me because I'm not here. Oh, I'm 
macho, I can deal with it. Because it, of course it does. Nobody mm. wants to be told I'm pleased you're saying shit it. or whatever. Good, yeah. or Nobody wants to get that abuse. I understand mm. it. Sometimes it's warranted. Sometimes it's a bit harsh, whatever. Um, but I think people have got a bit too much to say sometimes, especially on mm. social media. Um, when it's personal, it affects. This is this is the big thing for me, and I, I don't mind telling the viewers and I've told Dan behind the camera as well. My my big reason for getting you on today is 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 just this topic because I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this, and it's and it's not criticism mainly, it's abuse, and I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, in a way, I'm looking at you as the hardened Scottish bloke, and I'm thinking you could probably deal with it, but then I'm thinking your poor family, mm-hmm. um, so. Can you give us an insight into that? Like, do the players' families read that social media piece? So. And, and I think so. I think that must cause all sorts of issues. I think families will definitely see more than the player because families will probably search what right, what's okay. getting said. Yeah. Um, again, my wife's got social media, doesn't really use it. Yeah. But she'll she'll see plenty. Um, my mates, my mates will send me stuff that's funny. And I'll laugh at it, but even I'll be like, Actually, why would somebody say that? It's, it's not there's, funny. there's some stuff yeah. that, um, so that, that's mainly the ones that I see, the ones that people mm. send me like for a laugh. And I'll laugh at it, but then mm. I'm thinking, why would somebody, like, mm. what is somebody mm. getting for that? Look, I think, you know, I'm, I'm certainly guilty of heat of the moment, saying things that you go back and go. I'm exactly the same. Yeah, I'm, but I, th- I think, I guess you were probably, you know, growing up and, your your youth career if you were going to get criticism it's at the back of the local press or something yeah. you probably missed those early stages yeah. of twitter if you've got the young lads coming through now 16 17 18 Reading everything they've grown up with it yeah. it's, 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 think, it's nature isn't it like, i think more so it will be younger players that, that see it because they use social media a lot it's like mm. a it's like a brand it's like a profile yeah. for the young players mm. now and yeah it's part um, of the game yeah, yeah. It is that's that's just what it is um if you look at somebody like Grant, he's not even got, I don't even know if he's got a phone. Um, Fax machine, yeah. But, so he, he, he's not going to see stuff, but I think young yeah. boys do see it, and it, mm. I'm guaranteeing it affects, it affects mm. everybody who's reading it. And as I say, it'll, it'll normally be my family. Yeah. You know, my wife will see stuff. And How I mean, does it affect them? How does it affect your wife when she reads those comments that are personal uh, abuse? She won't really tell me much that she sees now. That right, because she's almost protecting you from yeah. it. Yeah. That's so sad. It's awful enough. But she, she'll, if we lose or whatever, see, if we lose on a Saturday, you know, going to town on a Sunday, she'll be like, really? Oh, oh, that's what it affects me the most. Mm. Like going out and stuff. And when you're out, you don't, like, nobody will really say much to mm. you, to be honest. It's um, all online, isn't it? They don't say it's it online. Face. It's on. I've had a couple bits, obviously, when I've been out and uh, really, yeah, a couple, a couple bits. Um, again, just I'm sorry to hear that. It's Shit. no, it's fine, but I, I get most of it, but it's uh, it's when it's when it, if if I'm my wife and little yeah. one, that's yeah, it affects your family. And and I guess that's been even more prevalent this season because it's it. I'm trying to still wrap my head around. It. I think well, we're fourth, fifth in the division, but it, it feels like the fan sentiment is it's been toxic at times. Like we sit in the yeah. Barclay, and there's been occasions where we've been winning, and it feels constantly on a knife edge that it's about to turn. And I still can't quite work out why, but it must have been difficult at times this season yeah. under, under Dean because yeah. you know you, Dean's had it difficult. He's come into a Premier League season when we've been struggling. He's taken over from a manager that completely, you know, changed things, and there was a, you know, they're t- two very different personalities. I mean, this season can't have been easy, despite the ten-game unbeaten run, the win on Saturday. Like, there have been some good performances yeah. in there, but it, it feels different this season. Yeah, even even you just mentioned there a ten-game unbeaten mm. run, like that's, that's unheard of easy this in this yeah. league. It's mm-hmm. it's so tough, and I know you. He says toxic there. I, I, I'm not going to use that word. I, I probably shouldn't even mention something like that. But it, you, you can feel it mm. in in the stadium. And even if we're winning one 0 and mm. there was a game recently we came off um, at half time nil nil. Yeah. Um, I'm not and sure if there was booze. booze and stuff. Yeah. And it's like it is tough. Um, and it and everybody can have their opinion. And 
I get how everybody's feeling, frustrated. Uh, we've not been where we can be, where we should be. We know that. We take responsibility for that. But it's uh, that that does affect you. Mm. That a hundred percent affects you going into games, and you know you can feel that tension within the place. And as I say, I I do get it. I get do, why yeah. they're frustrated. I get why. I get it all. I'm a fan myself. Mm. But playing in it, it affects you. So why do you think fans are frustrated at the moment, from your perspective? We're, we're not delivering enough, and it's as simple as that. So, so then it can be through back to me. Well, we'll do better then, and it won't be like that. And I, and mm-hmm. I get that argument, but it, it's yeah. tough because when things aren't going well, that's when we're desperate for that bit of help. Mm-hmm. You know, when we're struggling a game, or when we're holding on to a one 0 win, or we're needing a goal. Yeah. You know. We we played. Um, I, I missed the game. I was suspended. We played GFU. Yeah. Their fans got them a result. Mm. Yeah. Because their yeah, fans got them a result, yeah. and and it, we we've already spoke about the atmosphere at Carr Road and the times where the fans were just with mm. us yes. together. Everybody did, and we need to do our job for it to be like that again. We need to be better, and I keep getting back to that. But it's like yeah, we just all need to be pulling in the one mm. direction. And I think that's where the success comes. Yeah. And do you think it's performances then, Kenny? Because the only thing I'd, I'd positively challenge you on there with regards to the Sheffield United performance and, and their win at, at their gaff, I think what they do well is they they bully people, they put a big tackle in, and at that point, yeah, the fans it's... get up. The only thing I'd say is, I don't think we're that, I don't think we've been that side this season. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we've... My observations are, and I'm happy for you to beat me up or disagree here. Don't beat me up, please, on camera. It'd be awfully embarrassing. But I just think we're not putting in enough tackles. We're not aggressive enough. Like, do you feel that? Because I think the fans feed off that. It's yeah. classic. Like, we want to see fight, determination, pressing. And I think we've seen that in, in, in certain games this season. Certainly in 20-minute patches, we've yeah. definitely seen yeah. it. Do you agree? Do you yeah, disagree? a no, 100% agree with that. Because there has been games where... We could have put games to bed with the way we're playing, or we could have, you know, been more aggressive. We mm. there, there's been a word that we've used far too much this season. We we look at game after every game, and it's been passive. Mm. Passive. It's been it's been used far too much when we're at the training ground after games, and the manager's so big on it, us being aggressive when we've not got the ball. Whether we're in a shape or not, we need to be more aggressive. And mm. so so then us as players need to take responsibility and take that on board mm. and, and go and do it. You've just says there. It, you know, gives the fans that lift in it, and it needs to be more because I mentioned the chef you one there. Like, it would be a block mm. tackle, or it would be one in a corner, or something like that. Yeah. That just it does yeah. lift everybody. So we're in the playoffs at the moment. At time of speaking, we've just come off the back of a really positive win against a good Swansea side. Do you think we're good enough to to go up this season? Do you think it, we're capable of it? Yeah, 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 and that. And again, I'm not saying that because it's what I should say. I'm saying that because it's what I believe. Mm. I, I genuinely, if you look at us, well, do you think our squad's good enough to go up? Yeah, well, at the start of the season, you look at it and go, we've got the best squad on paper. And that's and maybe where, saying that, weren't they? That's maybe where yeah. the disappointment comes from. Yeah. The fact we're in the playoffs yeah. and there's still moans is almost a, a backhanded compliment mm-hmm. because we know what you guys are capable of, I think. It's the expectancy, but we need to live up to that expectancy. Mm. So... The expectancy is within the building as well. It's not just everybody else saying best squad and paper. We feel like we mm. we should and could win this league. Mm. Good. I'm, ple- I'm pleased. And I can feel that you genuinely believe that. The, the other thing that I want to talk about, Kenny, is um, we've spoken a lot about, you've said that there, with regards to, to Daniel's um, dismissal, you know, the players letting the manager down, etc. Like, And you're then again saying, you know, the players, the players. But tell us about... Tell us about Dino. Tell us about Dean Smith because we don't. I think it's fair to say at the moment the fans aren't quite connecting. Yeah. I'm probably putting that polite. Mm-hmm. He's getting a lot of criticism, yeah. but yet I hear from O'Neill that behind the scenes at, at the Lotus Training Centre, it's great. The coaching's brilliant. Um, accountability and responsibility. Lots of conversations, solving problems and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, what's your experience under Dean Smith so far? What is he like as a coach, as a manager, as a man? Talk us through Dean Smith. Uh, and what you've just said there, people say, well, it doesn't add up then. What, like, where is the, why is it not working? Why is it mm. not then transparent onto the pitch? Like, we, we ask ourselves that same question. We, we work tirelessly through the week 
doing the right things, working on everything. We work on Monday, Friday, we, we'll cover every kind of a way we want to play, build up for the back, possession, counter press is massive what we want to be, um, being aggressive. We, we do all this and it's, it's, it's just not coming together. Mm-hmm. And, and again, the, as players, when you go over that white line, you need to take responsibility. And again, I've got social media, don't use it too much. I see the, I see the stuff that the manager gets. And yeah. again, do you think it's fair? Responsibility for, it's fair for where we should be because the okay. quality that we've got. Okay. But again, players, mm. need, we, we need to do more because you've just said we've got the best squad on paper. Like going short, mm. and it's just it's one of these things we. So that's difficult, isn't it, Kenny? Because in the stands, there's a lot of noise of it's like the silver bullet of oh right no you know Dean Smith this Dean Smith that but actually I've said this the whole time I don't think it's as black and white I do think it's the I do think it's you boys I, I don't think we've set up into going to games particularly poorly again great result the way at, at Swansea it just I don't know it just it must be really difficult because then you must feel that there's pressure on the manager right and so like how do you combat that like I don't I don't really know what it must be like because you're you're experiencing such a positive environment at Colney, but when you come to Carrow Road, it has been toxic. You won't use that word, but we will. It has been toxic. And the thing, the thing with the manager is, he's happy. To, he'll take all. If he's getting that, and the players aren't, he's so comfortable with that. Mm. He doesn't want that going on to the players. Right. He'll take all that responsibility off the players. Like if the fans aren't happy, like he'll take that. He takes it. And. I think we need to take a bit more of that mm, because, as I say, we, we're being set up. You know, fans will say stuff about the manager, but then before a game, if it's the team that the fans are wanting on paper <laughs> and then we don't deliver, what's the manager done? It's, so it's one of these things, I think, I think everybody within the place needs to take more responsibility, but the players who are on the pitch, and, and I've been there most of the season, mm. and, I, and I take a lot of the responsibility. Um, that's what we need to do we, we really need to stand up because we are halfway through mm-hmm. whatever the season um, and we're not in a position we want to be in but we've we're, we're speaking about the this negative kind of a thing about the place yeah. but we're not far off we want yeah. to be without you know really doing too much I feel as if we could have spoken for another hour. We'll uh, we'll do a part two when we get promoted at the end of this season. Last thing, Kenny, I must say we always do this. What is your message for the Yellow Army, for the Norwich fans? They're, they're, there's so many watching and listening now. What what can they do to not just support you, but support the boys for the rest of the season? What what is your yeah. message to the Yellow Army? Well, I've I've obviously spoken about it a lot there, and I don't want to come across like I'm. Putting any sort of blame for the fans, kind of a you know me saying, oh, it would help if the fans cheered more. It's it's not like that. I'm just, I just know the success it brings when everybody's pulling in one direction. You've seen it. I've in seen it firsthand. I've been involved in it. I know how good I feel on the pitch. The players feel on the pitch. I get we need to give more. Yeah. To to bring that atmosphere up, but you know, hopefully going forward. Um, we raise it, everybody comes with us. Kenny McLean. And points mean prizes. Exactly. Yes. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank we you really very appreciate much. it. Thanks, Thank mate. You. The Thank you.